We have a 2D non-viscous incompressible flow problem here. We are given the stream function. You can see that the stream function is equal to negative 2 times x minus y. We're dealing with English units, so we have feet squared per second. And x and y, which those are just coordinates, those are also going to be in feet. Um, our questions that were asked, we want to figure out if continuity is satisfied. We want to know if the flow field is irrotational. If it is irrotational, we need to find the velocity potential. Remember, velocity potential is phi. And then after that, we want to determine the pressure gradient in the x direction at the location where x equals 2 and y equals 2. So let's start on part A. That's the one asked about continuity. I've written down the 2D version of the continuity equation. You can see we need to have the partial of u with respect to x, and then we're going to add to that the partial of v with respect to y. Now, in order for continuity to be satisfied, this equation needs to equal 0. So we need to figure out if that's the case that we have here. Now, all we're given is the stream function. So in order to figure out if continuity is satisfied, we need to figure out what u and v are. And we have relationships between u and v and the stream function. You can see I've written them right here. So u, which is the x component of velocity, that is equal to the partial of the stream function with respect to y. And if we use the stream function we're given in the problem, which is right here, and we take the partial of that with respect to y, we are going to get 2. And then v, which is the y component of velocity, that's going to be the negative partial of the stream function with respect to x. So if we go up to this equation again for the stream function, find our x term, take the derivative, we are going to get a negative. All right, it's going crazy here. We're going to get a negative times a negative 2, which is going to give us 2. All right. So now we have equations for u and v. What we need, though, we need the partials of u and v with respect to x and y. So let's look at u right here. We said that u is equal to 2. So the partial of u with respect to x is obviously going to be 0, since we're taking the derivative of a constant. And then down here, we've got v is equal to 2. So again, if we take the partial of v with respect to y, it's going to be 0. Now, if we take these two results, plug them into the continuity equation, we're going to get that 0 plus 0, obviously is 0. So continuity is satisfied. All right, so that was part A. Next, we need to figure out the flow is irrotational. So to tell if it's irrotational, we're going to do the curl of the velocity vector. And remember, the curl of the velocity vector is the gradient crossed with the velocity vector. Okay, And it needs to equal 0 for it to be irrotational. So here we have this. Now, I've written out what the actual curl is. So you can see we've got the three components. So this is our component about i. Here's the one about the j. And then here's the one about k. Now, we have a 2D problem. So if you look, you'll notice that we've got um, w here. w is our z component of velocity. For a 2D problem, we are not going to have that. So that's going to go to 0. Same thing with this next term. Here we've got a z. We don't have a z component here because we have a 2D problem. So that goes to 0. Same thing can be said for this y term. We've got z in the denominator, and then we've got w again here. So this is going to go to 0. So for a 2D problem, the part that we care about to tell if it's irrotational is going to be this z component right here. Okay, That's basically our rotation about the z axis. So we want to figure out if that is equal to 0. So let's write that down. So we want to know if the partial of v with respect to x minus the partial of u with respect to y is equal to 0. That's the question we're asking. Okay. Now, we already know what u and v are. We just found them. They were both equal to 2. So we know that the partial of v with respect to x has got to be 0. And then the partial of u with respect to y has to be 0. So indeed, 0 minus 0 is 0. So the flow is irrotational. All right, so basically, there is no rotation.
in this flow. And since there is no rotation, that means we can find an equation for the velocity potential. And let's do that over in this little area right here. Now we know that the partial of phi, remember phi is the velocity potential, with respect to x is going to be equal to u. Well, we already said that u is equal to 2. So essentially we can cross multiply this and we can say that d phi is going to be 2 dx and then you can integrate both sides and then we'll get that phi is equal to 2x plus c. Now we can do the same thing for the v component of velocity. So we can say that d phi with respect to y is going to equal v. v is equal to 2. Again, we'll cross multiply. And then that's going to give us d phi equal to 2 dy. We can integrate that. So that gives us that phi has to be equal to 2y plus c. Now we've got two equations here for phi. So we need to basically add those together. And that'll give us our final equation for the velocity potential. So we're going to have 2x plus 2y plus some constant c. And we can simplify that and say that the velocity potential is equal to 2 times x plus y plus c. Right. So there's that equation for the velocity potential. Now, the last thing is to find the pressure gradient in the x direction. So when you're asked a question like that, usually you're going to go to the Navier-Stokes equation. So that is what this equation is here. This is Navier-Stokes for just the x direction. Um, so you can see we've got density times u times the partial of u with respect to x plus v times the partial of u with respect to y, so on and so forth. And then on the right hand side we've got this negative partial of pressure with respect to x. Now this term right here, that's the pressure gradient it's asking for. Okay, So we've got our pressure gradient and then added on to that we've got our viscosity times our second derivatives here. Now, we've got um, our u and our v already calculated. So you can see here we're taking the partial of u. u was equal to 2. So remember that. u was 2. So if we're taking the partial of u with respect to x, y, or z, all of those are going to go to 0. So basically this whole thing goes to 0. And same thing over here on the right. We can't have a second derivative. That's going to be 0 also. So just set that to zero. All right. So essentially then we're going to have zero equals the negative partial pressure with respect to x plus zero. So our pressure gradient in the x direction is going to be zero. So essentially pressure is not changing in that direction. Okay. So the coordinates x equals two and y equals two were never used in this case. All right, so that is the end of that problem.